Hey everyone, Brian Lagunas here, and today I'm going to answer another tech question. If you have a tech question you'd like to have answered, subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and I may just answer your question in my next video. This question comes from a video that I just recently posted about a better way to data bind to enums in a WPF application. In this video, I showed you how you can use a custom markup extension to simplify the process of data binding to an enumeration versus using the crappy WPF object data provider. In a comment on that video, David White asks, I take it there's no way to do this with multi-language support. Basically meaning, can I localize the values of an enumeration based on the region of the user? For example, I speak English, so I wanna see the values in English. However, if maybe you speak Japanese, when you run the application on a Japanese system, you wanna see all the text of the enums in Japanese. Well, yeah, of course you can do that. And I'm gonna show you how. Now keep in mind, this is more of an advanced topic, I like to say, and that there are more steps involved. Step one is that we have to somehow find a way to support custom descriptions on top of the enum values. What I mean by that is we need a way to represent an enum value with a long text description. Once we solve the problem of how do we provide a description to represent an enum value, then we can localize that description. So enough chit chat, let's get into the code. Roll that intro. The application we'll be working with today is an application we built in a previous video in which I showed you how to more easily data bind to an enumeration. As you can see, we have a combo box and the combo box item source is bound to an enum binding of type status. Now the enum binding is a custom markup extension that we're using to simplify the process of binding to enumerations. If we look at our status enumeration, we'll see that we have a number of values such as horrible, bad, so-so, good, better, and best. Let's go ahead and run the application and see how it functions. Here's the application running and I can open the combo box and I will see all of our enumeration values displayed to us. Horrible, bad, so-so, good, better, and best. What we want to do is we want to provide the ability to localize these values depending on the language of our operating system or that the application is running under. So let's go ahead and do that now. The first step to implementing localization of an enumeration is first we have to have the ability to actually provide a different display value than the value of the enum. The approach that I would really like to take for this is I would like to simply attribute the enum value with the description. Luckily for us, there is already a description attribute available in the system.component model namespace. This allows us to provide a description such as this is horrible. We can add another description. This is bad. And let's add one more description for this enumeration value. And we'll say that this is so-so. Now, if we run the application, let's see what happens. Here's the application running. We're going to open up our combo box and nothing happened. Why did anything happen, Brian? I added this cool little description attribute. Well, besides adding the attribute, the next step is we actually have to convert the value of the enumeration to the description we want to display. To do this, we're gonna utilize what's called a type converter. So let's create a new class and we'll call this the enum description type converter. This class is going to derive from an enum converter this enum converter is a built-in class. Let's start by creating a very simple constructor. This converter is going to take a type and we'll want to make sure we pass this to our base class. Next, we're going to override a method. This is going to be called convert to. Let me go ahead and collapse this so we can see all of the code. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the destination type. If the destination type equals type of string, well then we want to do something. First, let's check if the value is not equal null. Now, in order to get the description attribute off of the incoming value, we're gonna use a little bit of reflection. So we're gonna use what's called a filt info, called fi equals, we're gonna get the value. Now this is the value of the enum, but we need the type of an enum. So we're gonna say value.getType. This is going to give us the enum type. Then we're going to get a field off that value. Then we'll actually use the value itself to string it to get the specific value off the enum type that we're working with. Now we'll make sure that the field info is not null, meaning we didn't mess something up. And then we need to grab the attributes off of the value 
that we're reading. So we're going to say var attributes equals the field info item, get custom attributes, and then the type, we'll say type of description attribute. And then do we want to inherit? I'm going to say false. Now that we have the attributes, let's take a look at what it returns. It returns an, an array of objects, but we don't want an array of objects. We actually want the array of this description attribute. So let's just really quickly do a cast of description attribute array. Okay, this is going to cast the attributes that we're reading into a proper strongly typed array that we can work with. Now what we want to do is we're simply going to return the attributes that length greater than zero. So we want to make sure we have attributes to work with. And if not the string is null or empty, the very first attribute, we're not going to try to read all of them. I'm going to take the first attribute that we find on the object and we'll say dot description. So if these two statements are true, if the attributes dot length is greater than zero and the first description is not null or empty, well, then we're going to provide the return value is going to be the attributes index of zero dot description. Otherwise, we're just going to say value dot to string. And that's it. We have now created our custom enum description type converter. The next step, we have to actually apply this converter to our enumeration. So we're going to add another attribute called type converter. And this is going to be type of enum description type converter. Let's go ahead and run our application and see what it looks like. Here's the application running. I'm going to open up our combo box. And now, as you can see, we have successfully provided a different display value than what the actual underlying value of the enumeration is. So now if I just kind of move this off to the side, we can see that we have provided a description attribute for horrible that says this is horrible for the bad value, which says this is bad and the description value, which says this is so so. We left the descriptions off of the good, better, best options. So we get the default display of those enumeration values. So step one complete. We have now properly implemented the ability to provide a different display value than the actual underlying value of the enumeration. So step two is let's localize this bad boy. Now, the first step to localizing anything is you have to have the actual localized resources somewhere. So to do that, we actually have resource files, the .resx files, defined here, they're called enum resources.resx. And as you can see for English, we're providing the best, better, and good descriptions for this is the best, this is better, this is good. And for Japanese, enum resources.ja-jp.resx. And this is the values for the best, better, good enumeration. Now that we understand where the localized resources are going to come from, we have to decide how we're going to apply those localized resources. Well, we already have infrastructure in place to provide description. So I want to leverage this functionality that we already have. And instead of hard coding the text for our description, we want to provide the localized description. So to do that, we're going to create another class. They add new class and we will call this the localized description attribute. This means we're going to create our own custom description attribute. We'll go ahead and derive from the existing description attribute. And now we can implement our own custom logic for reading localized resources. Let's start by creating a constructor for our attribute. The first thing we're going to need is a resource key. Let's go ahead and store this resource key off in a private field. And now we need access to the resource manager. I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of our resource manager. Now we have a decision to make. This resource manager is going to be responsible for finding the localized value. Now we could just new up the resource manager here. Resource manager equals new resource manager. And then we provide the type of the resource manager. For example, it'd be type of enum resources. Well, in a production application, we probably don't want to hard code this because we don't necessarily know where our resources are coming from. So instead, let's provide an option to provide the type. So this would be the resource type. And then we will use this instead. Now, the next step is because we're deriving from the description attribute, we want to override the description property. This will be a simple get. We'll set our string description equal to the resource manager dot get string the resource key. Then we simply return string 
dot is null or white space description. So if the description is null or white space, we want to provide a default value. So we can do something like we're going to provide just the name of the resource key. Otherwise, we want to provide the description. So what's going on here is we have created a custom attribute that derives from the description attribute, and we are overriding the description property. We are then using the resource manager to grab the resource key for the localized value. If that value is null, we're just going to provide the key. Otherwise, we're going to provide the description that we found from the resource. Let's go ahead and go to our status enumeration and use our new attribute, the localized description. The resource key is going to be good. And when I say resource key, I want to point out this resource key is going to associate with the name field in your resource file here. So this name is actually the key. Where are we going to find this resource? In the type of enum resources. Go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it on these other options, except we will change the key to better and best. So now I'm going to run the application and let's see what happens. Here's the application running. I'm going to open the dropdown. Now we can see that all values now have a description. We have this is horrible, this is bad, this is so-so, this is good, this is better, this is best. Now, let's test the localization aspect of it. Remember, I have a resource file for Japanese. So to test Japanese, I'm going to open up my app.xaml.cs and I'm going to override the on startup. And I'm simply going to change my culture info to be that of Japanese. Let's run the application now. Let's open up our combo box. Now you can see here are the default description attributes. This is horrible. This is bad. This is so-so. And then here are our localized descriptions in Japanese. Pretty cool, right? And that's it. That's how easy it is to localize your enumerations in your WPF applications.